Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to the much anticipated Things You Missed series. This time we'll be covering Lords of the Fallen. This series probably doesn't need much introduction at this point, as it's how over 10 million people have originally found this channel. However, if you are newer here, let me give you a brief explanation. I originally created this series for Elden Ring, and it's a compact and concise version of a walkthrough where I show you how to reach and obtain all of the most important loot, quests, NPCs, and secrets, whilst keeping it as spoiler-free as possible and cutting out all of the fluff, to allow you the opportunity to explore the game world at your leisure, and then check out these videos to make sure you haven't missed anything of importance. So, with that out of the way, let's dive straight into the tutorial area. There's only a couple of quick things worth mentioning in the tutorial area. Firstly, nearly immediately head left into the water before you go through the door, and you can grab an Enervated Vigor Skull. You will find loads of varying rarities of this item throughout your playthrough, and this is effectively just some free money. Vigor is this game's currency, and if you go into your inventory and use this skull, you'll get a nice little Vigor injection. Next up, at the top of these stairs, you're supposed to jump over the gap in the floor here. However, deliberately fall down and you will find Forsworn. This is an armor tinct, which will change the color of your equipment. You can change each piece individually, or you can press triangle or Y to apply to all. And as all Souls veterans know, fashion is the absolute most important thing in the game. As we head to this next area, grab the throwing rock. And from this point on, always be on the lookout for hanging corpses like this one, because there will be many missable items such as this wooden cross hiding above you. This wooden cross is actually a pretty great upgrade to most of the starting class's starting weapons. At base level, it even out DPSs the starting sword of the Hallowed Sentinel. And the final thing I wanted to show you before we move on, make sure you soul flay the glowing body you can target up here because that will drop a saintly quintessence. These items are insanely rare and are needed to upgrade both the power and the quantity of your healing item. With that, head outside into the abandoned Red Cops and get ready for a really, really easy boss fight. Destroy Otto in any way you see fit. He's very easy to parry if you know how to do so, or you can just sidestep his attacks and use charged R2s to annihilate him. Now that he's dead, it's time for the real tutorial boss, the Light Reaper. And of course, he's an absolute walk in the park. He's the tutorial boss of a Souls-like, after all. Absolute piece of cake, right? <laughs> yeah, no. So now that he has most likely absolutely destroyed you, let's move on to the next area. As you leave the boss arena, head right and run all the way down to the end to grab the flayed skin item. This is a quest item that we won't be using for quite some time. And if you are in Axiom, you can see an item over the other side of the ravine. However, this is currently completely inaccessible in both Axiom and Umbral. So head back the way you came and make your way to the next vestige. Speak to the NPC and exhaust their dialogue, then rest at the vestige and we will continue on. Lamp's just a tool to be used as you see fit. Take it lightly and you'll find it's the other way around. Mark my words. As we make our way to the next area, make sure that you're in Umbral because you can soul flay this body here to watch a scene play out from the past. This will reveal some lore and also reward you with a rare resource called Umbral Scouring. Make sure you always keep an eye out for these because Umbral Scouring is used to purchase boss equipment. As we continue on, you can loot some minor holy salts here from above the previous boss arena. 
Now just carefully proceed through the next area, clearing out the plentiful enemies here as I call out the most important items. At the end on your left hand side, break through these barrels and behind it you will find a chest containing the hallowed condemnation weapon. Also, just a little bit before this, you can loot the broken sword weapon. Just be careful of the enemy lying in ambush. Once you've cleared the area, knock down this item and you can loot the first half of the Pilgrim's armor set. And at this point, I find a revenge lantern and I go on a wild goose chase to try and find the enemy it's leading to, which happens to be around 14 miles away. But before I progress on, firstly, make sure you head right and take out this flaming skeleton enemy. This skeleton can be very tough with some extremely annoying attacks. So play quite passive and make sure you get comfortable with dodging left and right when he starts shooting his fire at you. The best attack that's very easy to counter is when he sets his sword ablaze and then does four spinning attacks followed by a vertical sweep. At this point you should easily be able to punish with a few charged heavy attacks and now that you've cleared the area and he's dead use this effigy to go back into axiom if you did die during that fight and let's grab the loot firstly you can knock down this item to loot the orion preacher shield Then head up this ladder and in Umbral you can traverse along this spine bridge. Please note that unlike what I have done here, you don't have to sacrifice yourself and go to the Umbral realm. You can just hold up your lamp and point it at your feet and this will allow you to walk over the spine while still staying in Axiom. Over the other side, drop down and take out the enemies. This will allow you to loot a few items, most importantly the raw mangala axe. We're now done with this segment of the village, so let's carry on. As you're heading to the next area, this mangler is very kindly admiring the landscape, giving you the perfect opportunity to practice your charged heavy attacks and your backstabs. Once he's dead and you've grabbed the loot, head up the stairs to the left, and up here will be another vestige that you can activate and rest at. Once you've done that, come to this ledge in Umbral and pull down this platform. Now carefully drop down, and once you've dealt with the enemies in the area, you can soul flay this corpse to loot the Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliard. Once you meet the correct NPC, Umbral Eyes can be socketed into your lamp to improve its attributes, and we'll discuss that later on when we meet him. Right next to this item is some more Umbral scouring that we can do. And now you're ready to head up the ladder and on to the next area. Be careful of the mangler hiding behind the barrels. And once you've dealt with the enemies here, you can grab the loot from the corpse above and immediately equip the mine owner's ring. This is one of the most powerful rings in the game in that it increases your maximum stamina and more importantly, your stamina regeneration rate. For this next area, you will need to be in Umbral or you'll end up just walking into the water and drowning yourself. Progress through here, dealing with all the umbral enemies that will be bursting out around you, and now you can grab the second half of the Pilgrim armor set from the end. Finally, head up the ladder, being careful of the mangler enemies at the top. You can ignore what's happening in my game. If you are curious what the hell is going on, I have been in Umbral for so long that a red reaper enemy is now hunting me down. This leaves me unable to heal and I just need to get to a vestige or an effigy as quick as I possibly can. So once we've dealt with that mess and we're back in Axiom, the final thing you want to do in this area is kick this plank down 
and that will give you a shortcut back to the vestige you activated earlier. So go ahead and rest up and then we'll move on to the next area. Now it's a very straightforward run to the next area. Head back over the plank, kill the enemies as you go and climb up this ladder, grabbing the three holy wards at the top. Now you can drop down off this ledge and you'll see another ladder directly in front of you. Just so you know you're not missing anything, this ladder does appear to go nowhere because all it does is allow you a shortcut back the way you just came should you need it. Once here, you can once again speak to the Iron Wayfarer and he will give you a vestige seed which I strongly advise you use straight away in this flower bed to create yourself a temporary checkpoint. Now head up the ladder and out the room, and on your right hand side you will witness the first of many faction fights. I absolutely love that there are so many of these in the game, where the different factions, light versus dark, good versus evil, despite the fact that pretty much everyone in the game is evil, even if they're pretending not to be. So go ahead and wait for them to kill each other and then mop up the dregs. And now there's a bit of loot we can grab around here before we move on. Right at the back, you can get some mana stones and ammunition pouches. Round the corner here, you can loot the rusty cutter. Please be aware, if you're in Axiom, you will take fire damage. So if you want to avoid that, just switch over into Umbral first. And then you can loot a bunch of fire salt from the various little fire pools around this area. Now I suggest you go back and rest up before we enter into the boss fight. As this is the first episode of a new series, I want it to be too thorough rather than not thorough enough, so let me give you a few pointers for the boss fight as well. And if you like this, let me know and I'll leave it in for future episodes. So, the first time you enter a boss, you will have to attempt this fight solo. However, most bosses in the game, if you die, when you get back to the entrance to the boss arena, you will have the option to summon help. In this instance, you can summon the Iron Wayfarer to help you. And these summons do make the bosses significantly easier. They are very powerful and they are truly good allies to have. So if a boss absolutely annihilates you, don't worry, help is at hand. Specifically for Pieta, she deals primarily holy damage and she is fairly weak to fire. So I suggest having your holy wards up at all times, along with using your fire salts. It is fairly easy to roll or parry most of her regular sword swings. Apart from that, all you really need to watch out for is when she summons her mirror images view her arena as three lanes the middle the left and the right the mirror images she summons will always fly to two of the three lanes so you just want to make sure you position yourself in the empty lane so as to not be hit by the hundreds of swords they decide to throw at you Once you have defeated her, you will be rewarded with another Vestige Seed, a load of Umbral Scouring, and most importantly, make sure you are in Umbral, you can interact with this body and receive more Umbral Scouring, and most importantly, the Remembrance of Pieta, which will allow you to purchase boss equipment. Brothers and sisters, with your sacrifices, while I wish they were unnecessary, my wishes will not ease your suffering, but I pray my sorcery does. Now, when you are ready, head into this spiral staircase. Go up first, and you can loot Sanctify from the chest at the top, and then head all the way down, and I'll meet you in Skyrest Bridge. Now, just explore Skyrest at your leisure. I won't tell you what to do here, and I won't give away too many of the NPCs. I want you to be able to explore that all yourself. Let me just point out a few key bits of information. The first guy you speak to, Exacta Dunmire, sells a few early Radiant spells. 
so if you're going for a Radiance build, he's the guy to speak to. And please note that all NPCs' shops will expand throughout the game, so make sure you come back and check them frequently, because they will have more weapons, more spells, and more armor the further along the game you get. You can also speak to Pieta to upgrade your Sanguinarix with the saintly quintessence we looted earlier. And there are a few more NPCs around, such as the Knights of Fidelis. And make sure you head down and speak to them because you can also loot the Aura of Tenacity down here. Next up, if we head back up the stairs and go into the room almost directly opposite Pieta and peer into Umbral, you will see this groovy looking guy. When you are ready, transition into Umbral and go and speak to him. This is the NPC you need to do anything to do with your lamp, such as upgrading and socketing your eyes, and also purchasing any remembrance gear. You can't do the remembrance gear yet. We need an item to be able to do so, and we'll be grabbing that in episode two when we reach Pilgrim's Perch. Now that you've acquainted yourself with all the NPCs, rest up and head out this door by Pieta, and you'll see that Dunmire has moved down here. If you peer into Umbral, you can walk through this locked gate. However, your way is barred by yet another locked door at the bottom of the stairs. I will show you how to open that door, along with all the incredible lore and loot on the other side of it in the next episode. That is the end of episode one of the things you missed in Lords of the Fallen. Please let me know if you like this format and anything you would like me to do or not do so I can tweak these episodes and make them as perfect as possible as we progress through this series. And for now, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.